Okay, um, my boy just interrupted uh, me. That's why I didn't part three. That's part three. Mm. Yeah, that was part. Um, okay, so wherever that. Marquina, um, I was hurt. This beauty. Um, as you can see, I haven't colored this one. That's what I do with a lot of my pictures. I don't color them, I just catch them. And, um, you know, I add I start basic, I add detail later. And, um, this is Marquina, as I said. Um, she's completely covered in armor, steel, bulletproof steel. And, um, up to her neck, everything. You know, even her tail. And now, uh, as you can uh, see, she has, actually has a big gun, a machine gun, on her back. It was also designed by Nyayo that this gun is, is quite slow. It only fires about 100 rounds a minute, so 100 bullets a minute. 100 round is like a bullet, it's basically what it stands for. And, um, but these bullets are, are more piercing, so it could, this machine gun could easily disable a tank in a matter of seconds. And um, Merquina is actually uh, Nyayo's loyal um, bodyguard. She's actually, she doesn't get paid at all, but she will, she, but she's extremely loyal, so she would actually sacrifice anything if she has to, to save Nyayo. And in the bottom here, you see that she is uh, standing on top of a machine, like it, it's a robot basically that she actually defeated, has some wire in her glove, hands right there. And basically all the venues and uh, these girls and guys are going to be facing machines because um, these plants actually had, bo both of them actually had um, projects where they did these little machines, they're like uh, they were four-legged robots that would actually uh, like um, actually patrol certain planets and you know look for troubles, you know, if, if there was an invasion or you know, some kind of, you know, you know you know, they would overlook it and they could handle it. That doesn't mean necessarily they would kill everything, but you know, these machines would actually replace soldiers in places where they don't have to be. Because, you know, they usually would send out soldiers to patrol in certain pla parts of the planet, uh, galaxy. And um, that was a lot of, that was, that was really expensive and it was not a lot of fun. You got, you got paid for it, but it was not a lot of fun for some people. And you know, so they made these machines, and something went wrong, and the machines attacked back, and they have no idea how it happened. <coughs> they both blame each other for rigging each other's machines, and um, I haven't actually made up my mind what the truth is going to be <laughs> about this. But you know, there, there's a lot of these machines. There's like millions and millions and millions and millions of these machines, and that's what they're going to be facing shooting at. These those rapid fire machine guns are not meant for people. So there's not gonna be a blood core and, and cut off legs and limbs and okay well I'm not gonna be there gonna be like you know it's gonna be blood and gore everywhere. No, no. I'm not gonna do that. So don't worry. It's just they're facing machines. And um you know, okay. So that's the point and another thing about her is that uh, I told you she doesn't get paid and she's only about five years older than Yayo so she's getting closer to, mature, to the maturing age and she's actually a superhuman because her armor it says here weights more than her own body weight a lot more especially the gun the gun doesn't weigh more than her body weight but it weights a lot and but even in like you know her armor is really heavy it's it's super heavy and um she moves with ease because she's superhuman and um you know and she has amazing amount of strength and um she doesn't have she because of this strength she didn't really have like a childhood uh, friends and um you know she was really alone and when she was chosen as Nyayo's bodyguard after, you know, Nyayo escaped from uh, Bekwana, you know, the woman who kidnapped her and tortured her, you know, they chose her as a bodyguard, this woman as a bodyguard, you know, the only, you know, they offered her payment 
but she said she doesn't want payment, she only wants one thing, and, and that to be friends with Nyaya. Because she never had friends, you know, since childhood. And Nyaya was the only one friend, and because she's in her 30s, you know, uh, she, and she spent the first three decades of her life without friends, and she doesn't really know how to treat friends. So, you know, she, Treat, she treats Nyaya as a like as if she was some kind of somebody higher than her. So you know that's that. And uh, they usually walk around together because you know Marquina um, is you know a bodyguard and is supposed to be with her all the time. Well, all the time, and there's a lot of danger around. And um. What the hell else is there? Um, okay, let's show my work. And um, basically, there's two galaxies, our galaxy and neighboring galaxy. And um, there's great distances. So what I tried to do, <coughs> what I actually did, was um, I decreased um, the amount of time it takes for somebody to travel in a, in a spaceship for one galaxy to another, it takes just a few hours, instead of thousand millions of years, it's going to take a, a few hours, and, you know, it doesn't affect time, because, I'm, uh, I mean, uh, as, um, because they're traveling faster than the speed of light, and if you do that, the closer you get to speed of light, you know, you know, time slows down for you, and speeds up for everybody else, it's, I, I guess that's, how I can explain I can explain it better if you know if I know if I knew that everybody who was watching this video was my age like 18 20 or 16 somebody who was you know um, uh, like had finished high, uh, phys physics study so high school physics but you know I'm not gonna go into that but like I said there's gonna be a lot of distances that they have to travel and I have to decrease that because you know this can take years for one planet can take here from one galaxy to another. And this way, you know, there's going to be a lot of fights and there's going to be a lot of duels between Yayo and Ishigo. And there's going to be sword duels a lot. And, um, um, what else is there? So, I I told, basically uh, told you the enemies, the allies. Now, oh, this reminds me. Um, actually made a picture of, a, of a, one of the soldiers that actually is gonna. Mm, I know I'm gonna do it in part uh, five because I only have like one minute left, and before you know, exp ex no, I have just under two minutes, and if I'm gonna exceed the ten minutes, um, a limit for YouTube. God damn it. Anyway, so what I'm gonna uh, do now is um, I'm gonna explain some things that um, uh, for the allies, I explain the enemies, and for the allies, Ishko and um, her boyfriend, who is Ioma, come, come, I don't know, I don't know how to say it, but you know what I'm talking about. You know, they're the king and queen, and each one of them has an advisor. Somebody who, you know, just assists, like, helps them in some of the situations. And I'm really lucky this time, because the two people they have are both immortal, and they're the only two immortal people in this universe. And these people would not go against another person. So they would not go and kill him. Like, Mao, you said, but Mao broke that. Now, didn't he didn't kill anyone? He didn't kill anyone. Well, not by himself. And that, that thing that happened in the city, I'll explain earlier, that was an accident. That was not supposed to happen. And when, when he fought with Ishigo and he killed letters, and, you know, he didn't really do it with his own weapons. He just defended. You know, if he defends and someone dies, that's not his fault. But in the end, you know, he did help uh, try to run get back. So he, he's. Mao's uh, Ayuma comes uh, and visitor and. Um, the other girl, that red-haired girl, that's what she goes. I'm gonna do it in part five. Just a sec.